This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This is Luca Perk, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to another week of the Nightwing News. I am Phil. Joining me as always is... Kristen! Hello! I thought I were going to say Nightwing along with his owner, Kristen. <laughs> That's right, so we're back once again, another episode celebrating 80 years of Grayson. What's what it called? The Boy, the boy Wonder Years. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> This time we're talking. It is crazy. The boy and man, the boy, man, and bat wonder years. Yes. Well, the story we're talking about, he's still a boy. Because tonight. That's true. This is a boy. This is a boy wonder moment. We're talking the Batman. Yeah, correct. Batman Chronicles: The Gauntlet. Mm-hmm. Uh, from 1997. I remember buying this new, but I forget. Oh wow. Yes, I forget what month it was. Cause I did buy this new, but yeah. But yes, yeah, it's 1997. Yeah, it did- did Dixon write this or somebody else? Um, no, this is by, well, it says story and art by Bruce Canwell and Lee Weeks. Okay, well, yeah. good job, Bruce and Lee. I've never, Bruce and Lee. I'm familiar with Lee Weeks' art, but I've never heard of Bruce Canwell before, I don't believe. Well, good job, Bruce. <laughs> and I guess this was, must have been a Batman Chronicles special, which is kind of weird because uh, <laughs> the Batman Chronicles was a quarterly book. Yeah, and oh yeah, that's right. But it was not just Batman. No. Devin Grayson's first thing she ever wrote was for the Batman. Well, not first thing she ever wrote, but first Batman thing she wrote was it, for the Batman Chronicles. It ran from 1995 to 2001. It was usually it was oversized, so it had like three stories. Usually one with Batman, and then two other stories with other Bat characters. Okay. And it was quarterly, so like with the, all the other Batman books, since there's 52 weeks in a year, that way you'd ha- you could get a Batman book every week of the year. Uh, mm-hmm. They kind of did that with Superman. That was too. smart. They kind of did that with Superman too, except yeah. it wasn't a thicker book. It was just like they every, you know, once a quarter they just yeah. had like an extra book. Yeah, that's cool. Well, it sounds like not the quarterly thing, but it sound it sounds a little similar to the Batman family books in yes. the seventies mm-hmm. um, that were kind of compilation books. Actually, those might have started out quarterly and then they went to every other. I want to say or something like that. Yeah, but I did remember, yeah, like back in that period, yeah, they wanted Batman and Superman to have a book every week. <laughs> Dang, yeah. Which, well, actually, the original Batman books were quarterly. That's why they had four stories in them. Yes. One whole Even though, you know, I'm sure kids tore through them. Bam. And then they were left waiting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, back in the late 90s, they, they a lot of the big characters had like, oh, you know, almost, a, you know, so many books they had in one almost every week, like Spider-Man even at Marvel and stuff. And, yeah. Well, I bet Batman has one every week now. Um, almost. Kinda, cause yeah, I think Batman's still twice a month, and I'm trying to—is Detective still twice a month? Uh, that might only be once a month. I can't remember. But he's in Batman and the Outsiders now, right? So that's another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's in Justice. Maybe League. Batman, but the Batman family definitely puts out <laughs> puts a book out <laughs> once a month, like every week at least. There's yeah. at least oh, one every yeah, week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At least. Well, at least, yeah, there's all, you know, got Night Wolf, Nightwing, got, uh... Batgirl. Catwoman. Uh, yeah. Right. That one. Yeah, yeah. I think Red Hood and the Outlaws is under the Bat family. Red Hood and the Outlaws, yes. Although Teen Titans is not... I mean, mean, whatever. Kind of, sort of, with Damien, but yeah, still. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yes, Kristen's right. Who knows? Kristen's right, the Bat family. It's all fake. It's all fake classification anyway yeah the bat family puts out that they do <laughs> i didn't mean that to sound bad but that's it okay came out that way. <laughs> uh so yeah so that's weird so like that, like the batman chronicles was like an extra book so you get got like an extra book for the extra you know an extra special for the extra book, the extra book for the extra book it's like an annual of the extra book i guess that makes sense but it doesn't even say well does it say annual no it just says batman chronicles no. gauntlet Hey, I guess maybe somebody had, because this is even before Nightwing Year One, so it wasn't as though, oh, we have this idea 
for the gauntlet, and now we need to establish it. So, I don't know, maybe Bruce and Lee just had a good idea and took it and ran with it. And unless they were cashing in on Dick's on get first ongoing series, because this was like, what, a year and then... Oh, yeah, that's right true. Thing, so. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, it's a good one. Mm-hmm. It has a snazzy cover. Yes, I do like that black and white cover, yeah. Look, yep, minimalist. Mostly black and white, yeah, you get the red... Uh, with the red, yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty pretty sweet. Uh, so yes, it, it starts with a well, a, an attempted gangling killing. Yeah. Yeah. Setting up the extra little bit. Sorry, who is it? Minette, right? Yeah. Joe Minette and the gangsters and Batman wants to get rid of them. But what's gonna happen? And they're gonna kill. Yeah, well, we know what's gonna happen. Because his gang Batman is yeah, his gang's about to kill this grease ball, as they call him. Yep, yep, but we find out it's a special grease ball. <laughs> Not just any old greaser. So, Bat- so Batman, kind of- I love that splash page on part two, yeah, pr- just Bruce diving in. Yeah, it's pretty cool, yeah, that's cool. Sets that's off like good. Sets off like a flare that like blinds all the guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Joe Minette deals with- And then how later, later on he just throws all those bad rings to- oh, yeah. Hit their guns, and of course, they're perfectly hit. I feel like people have kind of talked about the batterings, and that really, in real life, the batterings would kind of be hard to aim. But you know, in the comics, everybody always aims them amazingly. Yeah, because well, they're very weird. They're very weird shape. Yes. Well, at least anymore, they don't like come back to him. It's usually like this, where you, you know they like embed themselves in somebody's arm or something, or like even like in even in, like on Justice League or like even in the comics, like uh, you had like exploding batterings. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. They aren't all that boomerangy. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then I do like how he kind of has the old style car. I mean, you know, this is a new book, but they still use the kind of old style Batmobile. Oh well, yeah, because it's it, it, it's a flashback. But yeah. Oh, with the big bat, right. the big bat head on the front of it. Yeah. That's like yeah. My, that's like my favorite, my second favorite Batmobile. Yeah. Which one's your first favorite? <laughs> um, I like. I like the uh, eighty nine, the one from the eighty nine movie. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I like Batman the animated series Batmobile. That's like it's kind so of so long. It's kind of the same one as the movie, except it's like more yeah. like yeah. rectangle. It's like it's not as rounded. Yeah, because even though she was the villain in one hundred one Dalmatians, Cruella Deville had a kick ass car. Her car was awesome. I was like, dang, that's a sweet car. And the Batmobile a little bit reminds me of that. How it's it's stretched on the front. But yeah, this Batmobile with the bat's head, we'll kind of get that in, um, when we get the prodigal, because cause Dick and Tim will be rat- riding around in that sure. Batmobile, because uh, Azrael blows up the other Batmobile in Nightfall. <laughs> Dang, Azrael. Yeah. Rude. Rude. You know, Bruce is rich, but those Batmobiles ain't cheap. Oh, Bruce gets in it, and Azrael tries to blow him right. up in the car. <sighs> what a jerk. Yes. So, yeah, Batman takes down the thugs, and then he uh, goes back to the cave. Yep, and who's in the cave but Dick Grayson practicing on the punching bag and stuff. And this is a really weird thing to get interested in, but he's wearing these weird little sock things. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That I'm like, are these some kind of special gymnast socks or something? Because Well, he is in a cave. Maybe it's cold. I mean, that's true, but they should wear a real shirt. (laughs) And maybe it's just the art, but maybe it's just the art. But like his face, like Dick's face here, doesn't he look, look like Tim a little bit? Yeah, a little. I think that sometimes, yeah, like that one. Mm-hmm. I'm very bad at showing it in the, on the screen. Yeah, he does. Kind of. The only the big thing that gives it away is the hair, because yeah. they never had Tim do the spit curl, did they? No, yeah, but like even yeah, back in the yeah. day, didn't didn't Dick Dix was like more wasn't as messy. Yeah, but at, like back in the day, is in the forties and stuff. Dick kind of had that, yeah, curl curl going on. So I think they're kind of hinting at that. But yeah, I mean, it can be hard to tell the bad boys apart because it's like dudes with black hair and blue eyes, uh, <laughs> depending on <laughs> the person who's drawing them. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so. But then Batman is giving him the 411. Yeah, Joe Manette thinks he's above the law. Batman's going to teach him differently. Her. And maybe Robin should be your teaching assistant. He's like, are you ready for my final exam? 
your final exam. And then he says, Mr. Doing some sweet gymnastics, bopping around. At least any test you give me. Boom. And so now the gauntlet is on. For July 4th weekend. Yep. Which weirdly kind of, I mean, obviously this is later. It kind of weirdly fits into Dark Victory with everything happening around holidays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, yeah, so it means they're gonna miss the fireworks that Alfred put out. <laughs> yeah, so this is like well, no way. It's too it's too daybreak on Fourth of July, so they can do it at night on July Fourth. Yeah, so he said so. Yeah, because he says you know we'll do it July Fourth weekend. I'll give you a couple of weeks. Yep, and then boom, it's July Fourth weekend. Yeah, I mean, and first we see uh oh, Joe Manette is really angry. Well, yeah, and he figures out doesn't he figure out there's a uh, there's an undercover cop. <laughs> In his yes. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. There's a mole. I, he, he he's been meeting with he's been meeting with Captain Gordon. That's right. That's right. Because this is early days still. Mm -hmm. Gordon hasn't been promoted to commissioner. Although they go back and forth with that, because of course in the very first Batman comic, Detective, what is it, twenty seven? I think. Yeah. He's already Commissioner Gordon. Yeah. Well, it's like after Crisis, once they did Batman Year One, it's like Gordon comes to town from Chicago, like right around the time Bruce is like, perf you know, getting ready to become right. Batman. Yeah. 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 When they changed things up. Well, and they made Alfred more important. I mean, not that Alfred wasn't important, but they made him there, you know, yeah, from saying, the beginning and yes. all that kind of stuff. Yep. <laughs> and then we get a hint. It's like Chekhov's gun, a hint that these car playing cards are important because they punch them out of the hands of, the, of Rick. Was playing with them. Your cards are making me crazy. Uh. I'm like, hmm, something might be up with these playing cards. It's like, yeah. Then Minette tells this guy, you know, collect any evidence. Delicane. Oh yeah, T take any evidence the guys collected, and then shut up our friend Ricky for good. So bummer. Murder. Ricky's yeah, pretty much. Ricky's on borrowed time. Yes. Alfred drops Dick off, and he gives him some... In the warehouse district. He reviews the rules, since we don't know the rules. Dick has to hear them for the 13th time, but readers only hear them for the first time. He has to stay... About how he has to stay away. He has to stay inside, or, the, to, stay inside city limits and remain in costume at all times. He gets a six-hour head start, then at sundown, Batman comes hunting. To pass Batman, if, Bat if Batman finds him before... Sunrise tomorrow. Sunrise. Then he doesn't pass. He's ready. So then, Alfred shakes his Alfred hand. Alfred wishes him luck, but really, Alfred wants him to fail because Alfred is wise and knows that really you shouldn't be putting a kid out to fight crime. But what well, he says is, Master Dick best served by becoming a part of the Batman's violent world. And we know that in the real world, the answer would be no. But in the comic book world, the answer is yes. <laughs> well, Bruce tells him he's like it's important for Dick. He's like. You know, when I lost my parents, I had no release for my anger and grief. He's like, those same emotions are churning away in Dick. Robin will be his release valve. Way to exercise that darkness before it can corrupt his soul. Also, I love how gigantic the picture of his parents is. I know. I feel like the picture of his parents is always getting bigger every time there's a every time there's a story. I mean, seriously, that's the size of a movie theater. I was gonna say that's. A, <laughs> I was gonna say that, that. I was gonna say like a king size bed, but that might be bigger. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's like, okay, I know you're rich, but I mean, are you for real? <laughs> They're like bigger than life size. That's how big that painting is. I know, right? I was like, my parents are giants. My parents were 10 feet tall. Sim symbolism as they're talking about the war, you know? Yeah, that's true. That is true. So then Dick's uh, 4.49 p.m. He's uh, running through Crime Alley, like hopping rooftops. Was that me? Sorry, I don't know what that was up with. <laughs> Can you hear the SOS? <laughs> yeah. Um, but now he lands on some. So while Dick is in Crime Alley, he sees a crime. Go figure. Uh, <laughs> it's Crime Alley. Where's Tells the woman to call the police, and he saves Ricky. Yep. And of course, it's funny. They're like, ah, just some kid who wants to play hero. You know, they think it's just some random. Yeah, some like, random kid. I love how he kicks the one you guy, know. and the other one's like, "All right, Robin Hood." <laughs> yep, yep. What are you doing? Uh, He's like, smacks those guys, smacks those guys around. You want a licking, Brad? And then, 
I'll give you a licking, and then he's like, you couldn't lick your lips. Yeah, that's pretty... That's a, that's a real burn. Unfortunately, they hurt... They stab Ricky and run away. It was what? A burn? Burn. Burn. <laughs> yes, that you couldn't lick your lips was a burn. Yeah, I know. Burn. Burn. But then, so, Ricky is injured, and he says something about Gordon's lucky deck. Gordon, and he says something about Gordon wants him. So Dick takes the lucky deck. Uh, and of course, you know, to make the story add, go on longer, Dick thinks, oh, shoot, I can't let the cops see me. I'll fail the test. Yeah, so he's on the roof. He's checking out the cards, and he's like, wow, no yes. wonder no wonder they wanted these cards. Can't, the mod, right, because the, the, the cards are not PG rated. <laughs> no, luckily his thumb's there to cover some stuff up. Yeah, true. So he thinks yes. he thinks the mob is uh the mob camera is coming. <laughs> I know. I love how they have at the top one. Wow. <laughs> uh, he's like the pornographers are selling to the police captain. Yeah, he's like, oh my gosh, Gordon must have a wild side Batman doesn't know about. Ooh, uh, Captain Gordon. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, so. Uh, Which, that is kind of a weird deck of cards to have, but I guess it fits in with his gangster persona. It's the mob. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, it, I guess they, guess they figure a cop's not going to have those. Yeah. Again, it's Gotham. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then suddenly everybody knows about the kid, and everybody wants him. Well, yeah, because they call Minette, the, the goons call Minette, and they're like, you know, Terra Nova's on a stretcher, you know, but we couldn't find the Some evidence. Some kid took his cards. Yeah. What? You losers! Well, they didn't even know it's the cards, I don't think, because they're like, oh, the kid interrupted before we could find the evidence, where he hid the evidence. So right, yeah, that's true. Minette's like, find that, I want this kid. Yep. And Gordon says, you know, oh, yeah, Ricky Terranova, he was doing our stuff, but some boy. Yeah, right. He must be trying out a costume for the big 4th of July parade. Yes, because Batman <laughs> and Gordon are meeting on the roof of police headquarters at sundown. Yep. He left the, he left the job with the, he left with the cards. And so Batman realizes, hmm, a random boy stopping crime dressed in a costume. Uh, I have a feeling this is my random boy, Andrew, who happens to also be dressed in a costume. Because he, he correctly assumes there's not that many kids in costume running around on the 4th of July weekend. It's not Halloween. Uh, so now, that, Batman uh, knows he has to try extra hard to find Dick because the net is trying to find him. Yes, because so Batman pulls the usual disappearing act on Gordon and then... Uh... He, Always, he's he's figured out the of course Dick's first stop would be Leslie Tompkins Clinic because uh, you know Dick doesn't know the city that well so but he knows Leslie so he's figured he'd start there yep. and Dick being the cocky uh, cocky little thing he is leaves a, leaves a clue for Batman <laughs> yep in the eye socket of a skeleton yep <laughs> uh yep it's, in, it's uh, not a message it's a puzzle Dick's trying to taunt me. Uh, uh, Batman is like, mm. is a, it, it, you know, if I was Batman, I'd be like, come on, kid. You know what? I do this every other Thursday with the Riddler. Come on. Well, at least, but, yeah. you know, it's nice. The kid's trying, right? Yes. And then uh, Batman figures out it's an address, of course. Yup. And then Dick goes to the theater. Yes, but he's spotted because someone calls the goons and tells them, yeah, kid's been spotted walking into the Globe Theater. Yup. Batman notices a pattern, so he's going to be able to jump ahead. Yeah. But he is pleased with what Dick is doing, even though he's noticing the pattern. He's like, oh, that's clever. So that's good. Yeah, because the, well, the, 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 the second location was the park, but Batman already figured that out. So he skips the park and then goes to the office of uh, his chief international competition, which I don't think they even name dropped. No, we just know it's not Lex Luthor. <laughs> well, we don't know that, but yeah, we just know it's not. Well, Wayne. the thing says something about Brian or something. Oh, okay, it's not Wayne Corp. No, but yeah, Dick. Dick. And it's gonna go. So it's interesting. I guess I can kind of understand because on the one hand, you're sort of, oh, come on, are we supposed to be showing how Dick is smart in this? 
but Batman's guessing the stuff. So I suppose it kind of shows. It makes sense that he is smart and Batman's acknowledging, oh, he's really clever, but he is just a kid. Yeah. And, and Batman's, you know, like, Batman's like, you know. Right. Could, it can't be, you can't be better than Batman the first time out. That no. would just be insulting to Batman. Batman. And Batman's like, you know, Rob, you know, he's probably been leaving clues all over town all afternoon. So he's like, I wasted enough time. He, he figured out about the Globe Theater, but he's like, maybe I'll try a different approach. Because remember, yeah. there are killers after Robin now. Yeah, I'm like, you know, that's fair. So. That's fair. Although Batman does make one major mistake, hmm. which shows how much he cares about Robin. Yes. Although, not a good plan. He goes to visit Joe Manette, and he says, don't mess with that kid. I Yes, I, I love scenes like this. You know, Manette walks into, like, his dark study, turns on the light, and there's Batman in the corner with his two unconscious thugs. I know. That's some classic Batman right there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then, actually, also classic Batman is keep your slimy hands off the boy. Then he but throws him, that's, on, throws him on the couch. Yeah, but that's uh, that's classic Batman's weakness. And then Minette's like, oh, yeah, no worries. And he's like, oh, Batman already left. But light bulb. Oh, yeah, he cares I, about that boy. I love how he's like, yeah, Batman, Joe and Minette don't war on kids. And then the minute Batman's gone, he's like, kill this kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, and by doesn't war on kids, I mean absolutely 100% does. It's <laughs> not going to be a war, so I'm going to kill him, see? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Killing this kid is now suddenly my number one priority. <laughs> so, yeah, then we see uh, Minette's goons about to go in the Globe Theater, and Dick hears him coming. He's like, don't be Batman, don't be Batman. And... They aren't Batman. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in in uh, in Home Alone, the- in Home Alone style, Dick leaves. Uh, kind of. Yeah, I guess he was setting a thing for Batman, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But instead, it's a bunch of mannequins coming down to scare that guy. Yeah, and there's like smoke and sound. <laughs> and then the guy has a, one of the has a sign that says "Kick me, I'm Elvis." I think. <laughs> <laughs> And the guy freaks out and starts shooting bullets into a mannequin. Told the dick comes down and kicks him. Yep. And, he, and he recognizes one of, him as one of the goons from Crime Alley. This is, uh oh, this is Ben. So Dick sneaks out the like the, the alley into the alleyway, and then the, the other two goons see him, try to run him over and shoot him. And also, you can't run fast enough, pretty boy. Pretty boy, that'll become a theme. That's right. <laughs> So they chase him onto a bridge. What would Batman do? He jumps off the river. Although this one, this one goon is pretty smart. He does say, yeah, but you didn't hear a splash, did you? So he knows he's hanging on to the bridge. Mm-hmm. Which I quite frankly was impressed because so frequently Gotham goons are not smart enough to put that together. <laughs> yes. And then unfortunately, then the helicopter shows up and starts shooting a dick on the bottom of the bridge. Yeah. Like, didn't expect that. So this is when. So he does end up splashing into the water. Yeah. And then he goes into the sewer, which is kind of gross, but reasonably effective. And then Batman, believe me, or Robin, I'll have to get personal. Batman never seems to acknowledge that that was not a smart move to tell Manette that he cared about the boy. But yeah. whatever. But then more goons see Batman start firing on the Batmobile, which like. Uh... Goons will never learn. You don't shoot at Superman or the Batmobile. It's not going to work. Yeah, it's true. There's this thing called Bulletproof. <laughs> oh, yeah. They are it. And they basically don't... The goons don't pay attention and run off the road. Yep. But then, uh, back yeah. in the sewers, oh. the goons are tracking Dick, and, uh, he gets to jump on two of them, but then, uh, two of them have him at gunpoint. Yep. I'd snuff you right now. While Batman, while Batman is talking to some other... One of the guys in the car crash. Yeah. Oh. Finds out Joe Manette wants the kid. But then they take Robin to some warehouse where they tie him up very ineffectively. Yeah. Well, the goon tells Batman where they were supposed to deliver the kid. So. Yep. Batman goes, finds out. Yeah. Robin got himself untied. Then you see some goon who is most definitely reading DC Comics. CD Comics. CD, yeah, but... Let's be real. Just from the just from the few letters you can see, it looks like House of Mystery, but yes. Yeah. And Batman. And it's the same. And it's the same design, the um, logo. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So yeah, Rob, Robin breaks free, 
and uh, makes a noose to hang the one guy, and Batman's watching and thinking, a textbook job. He made sure the rope missed the hanging vertebrae, the jugular vein, and the vagal nerve. The goon can hang for hours without danger of strangulation. Robin is going to be a very good soldier. A very good soldier. I mean, that sounds pretty miserable, even if you're not going to strangle to be hanging like that. Long time seems not fun. But yeah, Batman in soldier mode. He's like, awesome. But is he good enough to go one-on-one with the Nets top enforcer? Well, we're about to find out. Yeah. Boom. Robin flipping around on the plane. Batman's thinking, oh, maybe I'm not needed. Your history, I love that another splash page. Your history, dirt yeah, Your history, dirt bag. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty classic. Yeah. And the other one is I like when he tosses that one guy over and Batman says, where did that come from? I never taught Dick that move. Yeah. Nice. Must be a modified circus move. Because he disarmed him with the gun. Maybe it comes at him with a knife and yeah, Dick flips him over. Yeah. Runs out. Oh, crap. There's a couple people. Joe Manette himself coming in a car. They never stop. I want... Yeah, I Manette's like, I want the evidence. Evidence from your penny in a porn dealer? <laughs> yep. And then, uh-oh, they just happen to be running towards the barge with all of Gotham City's fireworks. Yep. Mm-hmm. Chasing Dick. How do we think this is going to end up? Well, yeah, they're shooting out on their chasing Dick, and then, uh... Is it Manette who fires the shot yet sets off, starts setting off the sky rockets? Yes, because obviously they don't care. Oh, we're on a boat full of fireworks. Maybe we shouldn't fire our guns. They're like, nope, let's fire our guns anyway. We don't care, which is exactly what they do. (laughs) Fireworks start going off. They're thinking Dick's about, Robin's about to jump. But then, uh. I think they've got him. Oh, yeah, Manette has him at gunpoint. Dick's asking him, why do you want a small fry like me? And he says, you had to pay for helping that damn snitch tear Nova. And he's like, snitch? No, he must have been helping Gordon. Uh, Joe Manette's having his thing. He's like, be hit. my best man. There's no way out. But then, unbeknownst to Dick, Batman is on top of the crates. Behind Joe Manette yeah. sees Batman standing there and is like, ah! Distracts him just long enough for Dick to grab the shotgun off him and throw him in the river. Yup. I love, but I love when Terra Nova had, or, uh, and then has him at gunpoint, and he's like, uh, and then I realized you were tied with the Batman. Boy, I wonder when you realized that when Batman was throwing you against the wall and saying, stay away from the kid. <laughs> yeah, or like, come on, he uh, was he's dressed up. Who do you think he's with? <laughs> I know, but I mean, if if going head first in the wall didn't clue you in, you know, it's like. Yeah, right, yeah, again, for sure. Duh. Duh. <laughs> So, yeah. And uh, the fireworks going. Oh, yeah. And then this random cop, not even Gordon, is like, you set off enough sparklers to set the river blazing. And Robin's like, yeah, whoa. But he's like, I'm mixing up with the likes of Joe Manette. I don't want any costume scalawags running around my precinct. You understand? Like, he's, he really does think he's just some random kid that was wearing a cape and running around on the 4th of July. <laughs> like, jeez, kid. You kids in your gang. And then Gordon shows up. You kids and is in like, your gang colors. I know. He's like, come on, kid. Don't be messing around. And then I love this as someone who loves to watch the 60s show when Gordon shows up at East Sergeant. He says Mother McCree, which is something that. Um, which you would think it might be Chief O'Hara, but then. Uh, yeah. The Lance. Yeah. He's definitely modeled on Chief O'Hara. Yeah. Mother McCree was one of Chief O'Hara's favorite phrases. Yes. Gordon's like, uh, Gordon's like, here, let's take, I want your report. And I suspect these two need to talk privately. Yeah. I was like, oh, no. Batman, I'll take the cards. How'd you know about the cards? And he's like, yeah, wait, I knew about the puzzles. Gives him the cards. And there, on one of the less salacious cards, is the little microchip. Mm-hmm. Robin's like, yeah, I made a bust. <laughs> Woo, on my first night. But then Batman has to get all Batman and be like, well, you should have given these cards to Gordon immediately. He's like, well, I didn't know that it wasn't Horn and Gordon wasn't on the take. He's like, you didn't consider all the possibilities. And so, like, this stuff I get, but at the same time, it also kind of feels like Batman just has to justify, I'm proud of you, but I can't be too proud of you, so let me give you all these reasons why I'm not totally proud of you, because 
How are you? Jeez, you could have. Why didn't you think that possibly these porn cards were not something bad and were just. <laughs> You're like, alright, whatever, Batman. Whatever. And now, because <clears throat> that put you in Manette's line of fire, and now the Wayne Foundation has to replace all these fireworks. Which I'm like, it's not Robin's fault that criminals are idiots and fire gunpowder firearms on a bunch of fireworks. You could just be like, Hey guys, Joe Manette blew up all your fireworks. What a loser. Let's tack it on to his uh, crimes against the city. Yes. But, I mean, also, whatever. Bruce Wayne has gazillions of dollars. And take. You might as well spend them on fireworks. And takes like, worst of all, I failed. It's way before sunrise, and Batman's basically like, yeah, the fireworks count. <laughs> yeah. But he has a cute little smile on his face. That, well, I mean, smile for Batman. It's like a smirky smile. Come on, let's go introduce you to Captain Gordon partner yeah oh although in that last one dick looks his body looks so adult but the size is so small yeah it's uh, (laughs) yeah like it is a little bit it is a little bit weird looking he looks he looks too old for a body that size well i mean maybe that maybe that's intent well i think that's just the artist rendition but i'm like you can can say that's kind of intentional to make people think they're not facing a child (laughs) Well, but they are. <laughs> yeah. Well, but yeah, but you don't want to telegraph that, though. Uh, well, but that's also part of the thing, is it throws it throws bad guys off that a kid is effing with them. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he definitely deserves to pass because he saved that guy's life mm-hmm. and made a bust. I mean, what more could you ask for yes. on your first time out so on did, your own? So did you just buy that digitally or is it on DC Universe? Oh, I, I'm on Comixology. It might be on DC Universe, but I bought it digitally a while ago. Okay. For me, of some of my very favorite one, well, because Comixology came out before DC Universe, so oh, some yeah, of my yeah. very favorite ones I had already bought. And then sometimes when, because you know, every once in a while, Comixology will have a good sale. Yeah. Um, I mean, actually, they have sales all the time, but sometimes they have a sale that's particularly good that I want, and um, then I get ones that are. Uh, so is that on sale? Like when it's buy one, get one free, usually ones I really like, I buy. So that way, just in case if they ever disappear from Comixology. Yeah. So is that on? Or I mean from so was DC that, Universal. Was that part of a sale? Yeah. I mean, a lot of the older Batman stuff you can get for a $1.99 or 99 cents. Because I was going to say, pretty cheap. originally this was four ninety five. I didn't pay that much. I think I probably paid $1.99, maybe $0.99 cents for yeah. it. Yeah. Well, when this was brand new, it was four ninety five. A little thicker than yeah. your average comic book. But. Although honestly, four ninety nine is pretty good. Oh, because these? nowadays it would probably cost ten bucks. <laughs> Maybe not that much, but yeah, it, it might probably cost a little more. But yeah, seven or seven or eight, I bet. Maybe. Yeah. The other thing is, um, Comicsology will have sometimes ones for free. You can get a lot of number ones for mm-hmm. free because I have a bunch of random ones on here that I haven't that I haven't paid for because they were free. But yeah. I know. It says a quote on Comixology, I've bought 298 comics. Wow. But I know, but I haven't bought that many. I haven't bought that many. Oh, because they were running a special one time. A lot of the Batgirl ones, like a couple years ago, they were having where you bought it and it came with a digital download too. Oh. So, like, I put the code in and yeah. then it gave me a free digital copy too. Yeah. But, yeah. I have just random ones. I mean, like, I have a Darth Vader comic that was free. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. But I do have the guy with Batman 66s. So, that was... Because I dug that. Alright, so anything else on this issue? Yeah. I think that is everything. It's a, it's a good one. You know, establishes a myth. It really... Um, I mean, you kind of... I mean, I guess you have to. Because, I mean... The phrase "the gauntlet" is not that hard to figure out, but it may it gives you a little bit more appreciation of some of the issues in Nightwing Year One if you've already read. Yeah, the gauntlet. Well, so. speak, speaking speaking of Robin Year One, uh, that'll be next week. Or sorry, yeah, Nightwing. Yes, Nightwing Year One. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the gaunt, Yeah, but yes, also. Yeah. So yes. <laughs> so yeah. So come back next week and join Batman, Robin, and oh, oh yeah, even Joe Manette comes back. And Two Face. Yep. And Alfred's stunning narration, though. Alfred's a good narrator. And a few other. Vi- There's like one or two other. Vi- yeah, isn't Mad Hatter in an issue? 
Yeah, he is. Yeah, unlike some random middle school kids. <laughs> yes. But yes, yes, definitely be here next time for Robin Year One because it pl- it's it's a good story and two, it's going to play into Prodigal when we get there also. So. Yes, yeah. Although weirdly, Prodigal came yeah. first in terms of writing, and then Robin Year One. But you know, yeah, they basically did Prodigal, and then it's like, well, let's tell this this untold story we were we were hinting yeah. at. Yeah, they're Prodigal. like, hey, that was a really good story in there. We should write that. <laughs> I wonder if they got a bunch so. of letters saying, "What is this story with Two Face?" Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think by that time people knew how comics worked. Like, oh, I'm just randomly making stuff up because you know. You only come out once a month, so there's all kinds of things I don't officially know about for you to fill in. Yes. All right. But yeah. Awesome. All right. Then let's get out of here. Yes. Send us your thoughts on Batman the Gauntlet. Uh, You can send them on Robin Year One so we can read them next time while we're going over the issues. Uh, Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Call the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38capes. Uh, follow Nightwing News on Facebook, Twitter, follow all the social medias. You can find them all in one convenient place. Hmm. Uh, that's Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. And remember to support the sponsors, Tweaked Audio, Hunt a Killer, uh, and make sure to pick up some books, you know, like Pod Life the Book. And for the discerning Nightwing fan, pick up Dick Grace and Boy Wonder. That's right. And when you go on Amazon, pick up those fine, fine books. Uh, use the Southgate Media Group link. Uh, doesn't affect you at all, but it uh, sends some money back to the company to help bring you such fine products as Nightwing News. Nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, when you go on uh, Amazon to buy your, buy these fine these, these fine books and uh, your your uh, naked girly uh, playing cards, uh, use the link. And your microchips. Yes. Don't forget those. And your fireworks. That's right. To put your evidence on so you can bust criminals too. Yes. Bust some skulls. Skeletons. <laughs> yes. Some skulls. Yeah, that's right. Bust some skills. <laughs> some flares. I love that one. <laughs> yes. All right. And I know you don't have anything to promote, right? You did it all. I know, because you make me do the dirty work. Yes. I know. Why mess with perfection, Phil? You've got it covered. <laughs> Dick Grayson, Boy Wonder. Look at that. Look at all. Get all of your Dick Grayson knowledge in this thick book. <laughs> Look at that. All right. So, yes. Join us next time for Robin Year One. I keep wanting to say either Batman or Nightwing Year One. But, yes, Robin Year One. <laughs> We're not there yet. <laughs> no. I mean, we'll get the Nightwing Year One. <laughs> So yes, and like, and remember, go to uh, go to the Facebook page, Nightwing News. You can find the complete list of everything we're covering there. So I'll have to read the whole list throughout every all the whole time. So yes, go go find the Facebook page, Nightwing News. Follow us, check the list, send your feedback. That's right, next time, Robin Year One. And remember, when Nightwing uh, sixty nine comes out, send your thoughts on that too. The brand new issue. Oh, yeah. I don't think it's next. It's not next. It's uh, so. Really, Catherine? But anyway, send me five. But join us next. Next time. Same bat time. Same wing time. Same wing channel. Same wing channel. <laughs> Nightly news. Keep flying, Grayson. <laughs> <laughs>